Chiefs once again the Super Bowl favorites at plus 600 after shutting down the Cowboys. Patrick Mahomes didn't even throw a touchdown. Had a, had a handoff to Travis Kelsey for a touchdown, and Clyde Edwards-Alaire scored the other. Cowboys didn't score a touchdown. Held out of the end zone as the Chiefs win their fourth consecutive game. Four straight, and the defense hasn't allowed any of those opponents to reach the 20-point mark during the streak. The season really turned around defensively after that Buffalo game. Their first five games, they were 2-3. and three. They were coming off that Buffalo loss. Since then, they're 5-1, and one, and they're only giving up 14.5 points per game. Let's get Pete Prisco in here. Pete, how have the Chiefs been able to, to completely turn things around defensively because they've gone from one of the worst defenses in the league to one of the best? Well, one of the things they did, which was smart to do, and was move Chris Jones back inside. Uh, he's mostly playing inside now, and that's where he belongs. And he's a dominant force on the inside. Early in the year, they decided to try him at defensive end. Why? I have no idea. He got a little light. He wasn't the same player. He gained his weight back. He's back inside, and he's a force for that defense. The other thing is, a lot of young players are starting to grow up. I mean, Sneed, the cornerback, had a real... Tough go of it early on. He's playing much better. I think the young linebackers are flying to the football, and they're faster and playing much better. And Steve Spagnuolo is doing a great job of calling defenses. He's a good defensive coordinator. He's aggressive. He attacks, uh, and he throws things at you know quarterbacks. He attacks them from different angles and kind of confuses them. So add it all up, and I think that's why the defense is playing that much better. In the four spot now, heading into their bye week, next game is against the Broncos on December the 5th. Now, since getting smoked by Buffalo, the Chiefs are 5-1. and one. The Bills, on the other hand, are 2-3 and three since that win. A couple of really ugly losses, uh, one being to the Jaguars. But yesterday, it was a blowout loss at home to the Colts. What is going on with your pick and many others to win the Super Bowl? Well, a couple things. They don't run the ball very well, uh, and that's a concern. And, and that makes Josh Allen press and force the ball. And, and, you know, when you look at them, they're not a physical offense. And he is. He's a quarterback who plays a physical style of quarterback. But the rest of that offense is not physical. And when it comes time to play a physical team like the Colts on both sides of the ball, by the way, they got pushed around on defense, and they couldn't handle uh, the defensive line of the Colts. And that added up to turnovers. They don't establish the run, which means you don't have time of possession. They were dominated by a more physical team. And until they show that they can be a team that stands up to anybody that punches them in the mouth, they're going to have issues, and that starts Thursday against the Saints. The Saints aren't playing well, but they're a physical team, and if the Bills don't match that, they have big problems. Yeah, Jonathan Taylor, five touchdowns in that game, one through the air at the Saints Thanksgiving night. That's the last game on Thanksgiving. Pete, I remember asking you here on the HQ studio last week on our pick show with Brady Quinn, if this game between the Texans and Titans could be the game that we point to this week as, oh, my God, we never saw it coming. How did that team beat that team? I gave you a chance. How did you not see this coming? I didn't see it coming. <laughs> I, I can be honest with you. And, and I think it's one of those games, Chris, when you look at it, it was something I was concerned about because you had the – when you think about it, you had the five straight games against good teams – and then you went off the rails. And that can happen in the NFL. Every team has one of these games. We've seen it time and time again this season. We saw it with the Bucs when they played, you know, Washington. You have a game where you're not focused 100% and it comes back and gets you. And I think that's what was in play here. But here's the bigger concern. Where's the passing game? Where is Ryan Tannehill? Where is he stepping up because you don't have Derrick Henry? He turned the ball over four times. You can't have that. And I know he has injuries, but you're seeing this throw on, on tape right here. How do you not see that? That's an elementary, high school, sophomore type of throw, and he didn't see him. So that's the biggest concern for the Titans. And kudos to the Texans coming off a bye and playing hard, and playing tough, and playing physical. They won that game. As 10-point underdogs, they go into Tennessee and beat the Titans by two possessions. Uh, by the way, Tennessee has a huge game coming up this weekend. They are at the Patriots. That game's on CBS on Sunday. Let's go over to the NFC, Pete. Going to have to eat a little bit of crow here because big game Kirk Cousins really came through against Aaron Rodgers and the Packers. Come on now. Well, 
Kind of. What do you mean? Uh, he led look, the he two late well. scoring drives. Yeah, he also threw an interception that, that was uh, nullified because he didn't catch it, but it was a terrible throw. Look, Kirk Cousins is playing well. My guy, my guy Jefferson, who I said would lead the league in receiving in preseason. Remember when I made that proclamation? Everybody said I was crazy. Well, he's you know closing in the gap uh, when it comes to where he is yardage-wise with Cooper Cup. He's having a phenomenal year, and it really makes it easy on Kirk Cousins. And I got to give Kirk Cousins credit. But remember, that's a banged-up Packers defense. They didn't have Gary. They don't have Alexander. They don't have Smith. Let's talk about the rematch when they go to uh, Green Bay. If that's for a playoff spot and he plays well in that game, then I'll believe you, Chris. But right now, uh, kudos to him because he played well, but he also got away with a couple throws in that uh, late in that fourth quarter. Leave it to Pete to bring up uh, an interception that wasn't uh, to go against Kirk Cousins there. By the way, Justin Jefferson, fourth in the league in receiving, 944 yards. He's about 200 yards behind Cooper Cup. But, yes, an amazing game for him. He had the big catch for the touchdown in that one. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game, the highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics? Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.